Okay, between us. So this is, this is where we start to get to something that's really used quite a lot. Um, we're sort of building out. Okay, so, so it's a coherence of shortest parts. So we so basically outlined it before. So we have, um, we need to find all the shortest parts and have them in a big list, or we can, we'll think about ways to do this. I mean, you could have a list of all the shortest paths, or you could kind of, as you find them, drop a bean along each link as you go along. So you kind of do it in that process, right? So the question is, do you need to remember the shortest path between any two nodes? Then you have to have a whole list, or do you, can you find them each time? Is that what you should do? Okay. And so this is going to be this idea that uh, if two nodes... Um, there, if we, we're going to get between any two random nodes. We're going to choose two random nodes. If there are nodes that disproportionately involve um, the traffic from these randomly chosen two nodes, then, then we're going to say they're important. And so this is a simple thing. We're just going to count how many shortest paths that go through a node i. And um, I guess it's not on this slide, but obviously you can do the same with edges. right? So there's a node between us and edge between us. Right. So this has sort of got a, a fairly physical thing. It's modeled after a transportation type thing. Um, we'll see later on in the structure detection work that um, an another idea <laughs> is you electrocute your network, which is not great. But um, you put a current in at a random node and take current out at another random node and then just pretend every link is a resistor and then just <laughs> light it up. And then you do that for every random pair and then see which edges have the most current on them. We add up absolute values of current. That, that turns out to be the same as letting little random walkers go, like the lemming thing we talked about the other day, right? So you're going to feed all your little lemmings into one node, and when they pop out at the other, this, there's, a, there's a target node. So when they get there, they get to escape, but otherwise they randomly wander around. And then as they're wandering around, you just count how many times they traverse each thing, and you're just constantly feeding lemmings in and taking them out. Okay, uh, so that will give us another kind of betweenness. That's a random network, like a random uh, resistor sort of thing, or a, an electric electric betweenness, which sounds pretty awesome, but oh, it's not that good. Okay, so betweenness, we'll give it a big B. Um, people use this a lot, right? They use it in funny ways. It's 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 sort of a just a thing to measure about networks that might tell you something. Okay. All right, okay, so yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, if we're talking about a node i in particular, it's between us, b sub i, is we're going to exclude um, shortest paths that start at it. It's, it's shortest paths that go through it. Right. Uh, you can do it for weighted and unweighted networks. Uh, these sort of problems were solved in the 50s and 60s, I guess, in computer science, thinking about those sorts of problems, uh, finding shortest paths. All right, so um, so this is the this is one of the algorithms for it. I will just sort of outline it. Uh, this is just for unweighted. Oh well, I guess it's possibly weighted, but unweighted. This is going to be a tough thing. Um, using this algorithm, it can grow as n cubed, which is not fun because you can start at every node and then search and search and search, and you do a. Uh, so we're trying to find. Um, you know, if you're given two random nodes, how do you find the shortest path between them? Well, you start at one and then do a breadth-first search, which is find all of its friends. I mean, you've got a list, you've got a big list of friends, so you go to all the friends, and you mark them as visited, and you find all of their friends that are not you, and take the, the union of them, and you go and visit them, and then you mark them as visited, and then you find all of their friends that you haven't already visited, and you go out to them, until you hit your target person, right? So it's this you know, often sort of exponentially growing thing locally to start with, which is not great. Dijkstra's algorithm is very famous for showing, finding um, these paths, and so these things can be done um, faster if you've got sparse networks, then we get an n squared here for how long it takes. So m, again, is the number of edges, right? So if this is, this is uh, you know, on the order of n itself, then it's not so bad. Uh, a couple of papers, Mark Newman again and Brandy, so this is coming out of a social sciences actually, they end up with a fast algorithm, which probably someone has done in computer science and no one knew about it. Um, so they get to this, which is pretty good. This is, again, kind of on the order of n squared, so it's not a 
it's really just getting rid of this. Um, and weighted graphs are a bit slower again. Anyway, so we'll see if we can go through these things. Okay, so unweighted networks, this is what, how we do our breadth first search, right? We start at some node i, it's got distance zero. We're going to create a list of them. This is, I sort of said it in words, but let's see if we can just go through the list. So we get all the neighbors, we say they have a distance one, um, you know, we have a list for them, and then we go to the most recently visited nodes, right, and find all of their neighbors. If anyone's been visited, we take them off our little list, increment our distance by one, and then we um, label them as all, all being um, um, whatever the distance is, and then we just keep going through and through and through until we visit all nodes. So this is how to find all the shortest paths from I. And uh, as we go out, we're going to record the links. We don't have to record all those things. Ooh, maybe I ran out of space on this one. Um, right, we're going to record which nodes. If we need to actually record the whole thing, that's, that's a, it's pretty onerous, right? If we want to record from every node to every other node's shortest path, that's going to be a big, messy table. But we're doing it from one, uh, one node, and we're just, you know, and then we'll forget about this after we've processed I. So, um, so we've got these paths as we're going out, and this will run in, yeah, that's order m time, and that gives us n minus 1 shortest path, right? And then we have to go to every node and do this again, and so we'll, um, right, because we basically, we're going to run along all the links, and that's it. So that's pretty good. Where's my picture? Okay, so uh, we want to measure between this. Let's see if we can think about this. So we're going to start here and then go out through the network. And we, what we reached here, we know this is as we're traveling out. Um, <coughs> we want to do a good job of, of how many, you know, getting the right thing. So this is for, uh, uh, this is for shortest paths from here to here, right? So there are, there's this, this shortest path. And this shortest path that gives us two beans for this edge. This is an edge between this one. And there's only one bean for that shortest path. For this shortest path, uh, for this edge here, there's a shortest path from here, 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 and here, back to this one, right? There are four shortest paths. Right, so this is all just relative to this character here. And then we go to each one here and make them the start, and then the start, and then add them all up, and we end up with beans for how many shortest paths there are. This is for edges. This is edge between us, yeah. And edge between us is, I mean, a lot of things are better for edges. So edges are good here, yeah, yeah. Um, so it makes, it has a nice, and because we're doing paths, it makes, it has a sort of a good sense, right? This is the, if, the, if all these things are transmitting, right, if this one is sending messages back and forth, that's happening all the time, right? Lemmings are going out here. Then um, this is the one that has the most burden on it. All right, so there's a more complicated one where you have um, loops and so on. And so let's see if we can figure this one out. So again, there's a start one. So you march out from that. You're going to put one bean here, one bean here. That's, so in gray is this how many paths reached here. So to get to here, there are two ways to get to here after two steps. So you've got two paths. So it's been visited, right? So you start out with your little lemmings, right? And they go boink like that and you put one one and then they split right they can split so the lemmings I guess this is not a good analogy but they don't no, you have lots of lemmings and so your first lemmings reach here and here at the same time you know they've come from two paths so you put a two here this one there's only one way to get there uh, by the, by two steps and in three steps you'll get to here from one two three directions and then there's only one way to get to this so now they have three and then you have to go back and start to divide up like how many paths, right? So this will get a weight of two-thirds. This one gets a weight of a third. Uh, so it's, it's actually like the, the, the river network um, story. Uh, right, so one of the paths came from this, two came from this direction. This one has a, a one. And then we're going to add these together. Four-thirds plus this one gives us seven-thirds. 
So it's seven thirds back up this way. And then two thirds that's going to split because they're sort of these, these have equal weight here, so these are going to split. So we'll get a third each plus uh, a half from that one, so that gives us five six. Is that the right thing? Yeah. Five six five six. Then we're going to pick up the one here to get to eleven six, and then we're going to pick up five six seven thirds plus one that'll give us this piece. And they add up to one. Yeah, so we'll talk about through these. Let's talk through that and we'll come back to the picture. Okay, so there's going to be a count, right? Have some value. We're going to select a, a node i, so that's our top one. And we're going to find all of our other shortest paths, just as we said. Um, record the number, as, right? The number of equal shortest paths that are reaching there. And then we're going to move through the nodes according to the distance from i, starting with the furthest. And we travel backwards. We're going to add one to each value of this count along the way. And whenever there's another more than one possibility, um, we have to apportion according to the total number of short, short paths. Right? Because we, we can't, because there's, there, you know, if we've got a, a diamond thing, then, you know, the, the shortest path from this node to this node. Right, there isn't just this one, there are equal ways, so we want to give them a half each. Right? We're going to divide that piece up. We're going to exclude those two nodes, and then you repeat this for every node, and we'll end up with a betweenness count, um, which is the sum of all those things. So you do need to record, at least for each node, you have to record you know, the tree as you go out, and then be able to move back through it and apportion things properly. So there's a little bit of work there. But then you you know you can forget all that and start again, and just record the counts. Seem okay. So this is this was a, you know it was a clever thing, uh, and um, yeah, <coughs> yep, right. So it's the same thing for sort of a, a, a drainage area in, in river networks actually, um, with with one at each site, which is nice. Uh, well, I mean I guess. I thought we were doing this. OK, j indexes inches. Yeah, we add one to each edge as we traverse it. Um, right. So it's pretty good. OK. OK. So is it OK? So these things are just, you push a button usually now in your software, whatever you're using. But you should know whether what kind of betweenness it is, um, whose algorithm is behind it. But a, a lot of us say it can be done pretty quickly. It's not too bad. Um, and it's a useful number to have. Now, people, of course, then say this between us means something really, like, I don't know, you know, between, right? The number means something fundamentally. But it's really the ranking, probably, that gives us something there. 